So today's video is going to be about sex determination in fishes and this is the process where it, it determines how individuals of a species, of a genus, whatever, um, well, d determines their sexual characteristics and how they develop them. So generally I'm talking, yeah, about fishes and generally freshwater because it's better and fishes have a lot of different methods. So I'm going to talk about, so the first one is a very simple method and this is the XY. And so if you're the XY system, the X is inherited from the female side and the Y can only in be inherited from male, the male side, but males express X, Y, so they can um, pass down the X chromosome. So if you're female, you'll be XX, and if you're male, you'll be XY. And this is generally a very simple way of inheritance of well, sexual characteristics. And generally, there is the influence of something on the Y chromosome known as the SRY gene, and that in um, that it creates um, male characteristics so that's male female the females have two of the same chromosomes so this makes them homogametic males have two different chromosomes this is makes them heterogametic and then so this opens up to the other system and this system I believe is also found in different species of ancestors so this is the SW system and of course I really it's a little bit more complicated uh, with the sort of um well the sort of appearance of these chromosomes and stuff like that um but so this system females will be SW, they are heterogametic. Let me spell it heterogametic. So they will express two different chromosomes. Males are homogametic. This means that to inherit the S that makes female, you inherit that from the female line, so that, if you get what I mean. So let me do a Punnett square to compare the two, because that might make it a lot easier. So let's do the XY system. So XY, so that is the father, and then mother, which is XX, and this Punnett square is going to be really wonky. So you inherit, so that is two X's, so that makes, so those will be female, and these two will be male, because that Y is dominant. And you might have guessed the opposite is the SW system, so this is um, SW, and again, WW, Oh my god, my letters are going weird. So that's. So you can see that how the inheritance is working. So you still get that 50% chance of having 50% um, chance of male or female. And that system is also, the SW system is also found in um, birds. And a few other things but there's also it gets a lot more complicated i know in some mammals i don't think you see in fishes um the oh my gosh i think it's platypus so that's that um that very sort of primitive uh, marsupial um and is it marsupial i don't think i'm not sure but um they the male and female depends on how many X's and how many Y's. They have a lot of those chromosomes. And that is a sort of a dosage effect, I guess. And um, it really, it depends on the species. But there's even more methods. Um, so you can get temperature. 
so temperature is generally you see it a lot in reptiles so the hotter it is the more males i think is oh, is it females well the more of one sex is produced and then it can also be seen i believe in crebensis in epistogramma though pH has shown to have an influence generally on what sex you get. So I believe in Crebensis temperature though, uh, I think the higher it is, the more males. And then you could get other environmental influences. So that calls on to the next one that, this is one I'm more knowledgeable than the others. So this is hermaphroditism. Hermaphroditism. And generally, this is a lot more complicated than it looks, and there's multiple types. And it's not so common as much in fresh water, I guess, but it's still pretty interesting. So let's go for the first type. So the first type of hermaphroditism is simultaneous. So simultaneous hermaphrodites are both male and female at the same time. So these will have ovaries and testes. This does not mean that they can um, self-reproduce, although in species like the um, Cryptolobius marmoratus or marmoratus, that is the a mangrove killifish, they can reproduce, um, self reproduce. This is extreme in breeding though, and they do, it is it's very useful for um, colonizing new areas though. And it's not that common, and it can be, it can occur, but generally not all of these are functional if it's not sort of if it's a sort of a genetic defect, if you get what I mean. So in the next type, so those are both male and female at the same time. This can cause actually what's known as um, second dip. So these are secondary males. These are where the ovaries have ceased to function. So these are not born male. Those would be known as primary males. So this is just where the ovaries have ceased to function and it produces a male. Um, it could be that they've run out of eggs or something like that. Eggs are only finite, unlike sperm. And primary males are born that way. It could be a defect in itself that in species such as Cryptobias marmoratus. Next type is um, sequential hermaphrodites. So these are the most famous would be the clownfish. But in freshwater there's a few cichlids and also um, Cinebranchius, a type of swamp eel. Marmoratus. So these are um, hermaphrodites over lifetime. <laughs> So these will switch from male to female. Or vice versa. It depends on the species. They generally do not go back and forth. And this could be influenced by population. Um, and that would be stuff like maybe there's more males or more females. It could be that they've lost the female, they've lost the male. Um, so the Corcoran wrasse, that is a sequential hermaphrodite. That's where the males turn to uh, female, females turn to males, a clownfish the other way around. So that is probably the most famous, and there's not that many. The next type is not true, sort of anything related to that and this is known as um, pseudo so these are actually neither 
they are ne they're not are not neither they're not actually hermaphrodites. These are individuals that look like um they look either like a hermaphrodite or they look like um a male or female but they're actually not they're the other so sneaker males in cichlids i would say are the most common where you get a male that is displaying female coloration and it will be doing this probably to hide from a more dominant male and this is generally pretty i would say pretty common actually in cichlids but you also get it in other species and they could be doing it actually for reproduction but they could be doing it to avoid hassle from the dominant male and pseudo hermaphrodites aren't true hermaphrodites a common one as well would be hyena so the uh, spotted hyena the male uh, females will extend um have a very large amount of well they have a lot of testosterone and this causes them to have a large clitoris and this means that they are um look male and a lot of people thought they were hermaphrodites but they're not they're just females and so pseudo hermaphroditism is pretty common i'd say and generally i would say ignore coloration because usually fin shape and that lot will influence otherwise other than that there's sort of there's other ways likely to determine or sex is determined genetically especially in fishes and um, there's other ways environmentally a lot of it we're not quite sure and even within unlike mammals within one genus you can get different methods of sex determination so you can only go so far um with researching them Obviously, this does mean if there is a environmental influence, the care that you give your fish could influence the actual sex that sexes that are produced. But anyway, thank you for watching and goodbye.